the entertainer, the entertainer, you're the entertainer, the entertainer, you may... Hey friends, thanks for being here today. I'm Xavier and I am back with another video for you. If you like this content, please make sure to hit that lovely red subscribe button. And you can also find me on Instagram at The Black Case Files and on TikTok also at The Black Case Files. All right, let's get into it. As we just heard, Tony Clark was a talented singer and songwriter who was an up and comer during the Motown era. Clark was born in New York, but was raised in Detroit Motown, if you will. There are some questions on his actual government name. Some sources say his real name was Ralph Thomas Williams. It seems to have never been verified. Other sources cite other possible birth names as Ralph Ferguson and Ralph Clark, but nothing's ever been verified, so we shall stick with Tony Clark. Growing up in the Motown era, Tony was resilient and he never let anything get in the way of reaching his goals. He slowly began making a name for himself in the Detroit area as an amateur singer and songwriter. By the 1950s, he had finally landed a record contract with a small record label, Step Records. The label shuffle. Step Records was a small record label in Detroit, and I will say, I had to do a lot of research to find it any information about this label. I did find some info though. Um, the label, it was created by a Detroit native, William Stevenson Jr. And he released several records in 1959, 1960 by Herman Griffin, Tal Tonio and the Melodies. That was Tony Clark's first recording and the Barbies. From what I understand, Stevenson, jo Stevenson joined Motown in 1959 and was the head of the A&R department there during the company's glory years of the mid 1960s, you know, Motown sound. He left the label in 1967 for MGM Records. He wrote or produced dozens of hit records at Motown, uh, some with Ivy Hunter, including Dancing in the Street by Martha and Vandellas, Ask the Lonely by The Four Tops, It Takes Two by Marvin Gaye and Kim Weston, My Baby Loves Me by Martha and Vandellas, and Devil with a Blue Dress by Shorty Long. In 1969, he was appointed head of Venture Records, uh, a subsidiary of MGM, aimed at increasing their share of the R&B market. In recent years, he's largely been involved in producing stage musicals. Uh, some of those musicals include Swan, Showgirls, Wings and Things, The Gospel Truth, TKO, and Chocolate City. Going back to Tony. Tony eventually tried to do a solo career, and his first single on Step Label was entitled Hot Rod Car, which failed miserably. Undeterred, Tony was convinced and determined that singing and songwriting would be his future. He moved to another label called Fascination in 1962 and recorded another single, Cry, which again bombed. Clark, still undaunted, and he went on his way trying to make a name for himself. His big moment came when he and Billy Davis penned a few hits for Etta James, Pushover in 1963, and Two Sides to Every Story, which only became a minor hit on the Hot 100. Still more than he had. Tony's time to shine. Tony's working relationship with Davis greatly helped him to land a new record deal uh, with the Chicago-based Chess Records. He made several records for Chess, including his first charting single, Woman, Love, and a Man, which peaked at number 88 on the Billboard Hot 100 in 1964. However, it was, his, it was his single, The Entertainer, that actually got his name out there. He wrote and sang his own song, and his self-penned hit peaked at number 31 on the Billboard Hot 100 and number 10 on the Billboard R&B Singles Chart. After the success of The Entertainer, Clark was occupied in several engagements. He started getting top billing in a lot of the larger venues in Detroit, 
He never had another charting song though. And so he decided to try his luck further west in California. In 1966, he relocated to Hollywood and co-founded Earthquake Productions. He even dabbled a little bit in films with his most notable appearance being a small part in the Sidney Poitier star, They Call Me Mr. Tibbs. Eventually, he moved back to Detroit, saying that he missed his wife and children, and he settled back down. He was signed to a new label, MS Records, and released They Call Me a Wrong Man. Tragic End In the wee hours of August 28, 1971, Clark is alleged to have broken into the house of his estranged wife with a tire jack in hand. However, his wife had a gun and in an act of self-defense, shot him. Clark was only 31 years old when he was killed. I cannot confirm his wife's name. There really is very little information out there. I think her name is Joyce Elaine, and I think she may have been a singer, uh, also with chess records. Like I said though, I, I, I can't really confirm it. Just in case you were wondering why I keep referring to her as his wife and not giving her a name, that's why. Anyways, after his death, his career actually saw a resurgence in the 70s on the United Kingdom Northern Souls, in particular with his recording of Landslide. So I know that was a short one. It wasn't a whole lot, but I wanted to at least give you a little something. So thanks for watching, friends. I'll see you next time with another Black Case File. I try to upload about three to four times per week, so make sure to follow the Black Case Files on Instagram to see what will be uploaded next. See you next time. Bye.